Good morning from the vicarage in Shotley Bridge in northwest Durham. I'm Martin Jackson, the vicar of the parish of Benfield Side, St Cuthbert's in Shotley Bridge, and priest in charge of St John's Church in Castle Side. It's good to welcome anyone who can be with me as this service is live streamed or who's catching up later in the day. This service is going out a bit later than it normally would because it's a later start than we normally have. Our first service of the day is at 10.30 in St Cuthbert's Church uh, and then our service in St John's Church is at four o'clock this afternoon. So uh, time to have lunch and all the rest before. Uh, anyone's welcome to join us in our services and you're most welcome to join with me now at this time. Pray in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Christ is with us. God is with us. His Spirit enables us. God has created us and calls us to him continually. We recognise that now. We recognise all our causes for praise and thanksgiving, but also the reasons we have to be sorrowful for our failings in this life, to look to God in his love, forgiveness and mercy. Today, as well as being the third Sunday before Lent, is also observed as Racial Justice Sunday. That gives us all cause to think, how do we treat other people? How do we judge other people? How are we seen by them? In place of the more formal act of penitence that we might use, here are some words of Martin Luther King. When we do not see the gravity of racial injustice, shake us from our slumber and open our eyes. When out of fear we're frozen into inaction, give us a spirit of bravery. When we try our best but say the wrong things, give us a spirit of humility. When the chaos of this dies down, give us a lasting spirit of solidarity. When it becomes easier to point fingers outward, help us to examine our own hearts. God of truth, in your wisdom, enlighten us. God of love, in your mercy, forgive us. God of hope, in your kindness, heal us. Creator of all people, in your generosity, guide us. Racism breaks your heart. Break our hearts for what breaks yours, O Lord. We pray in faith. Amen. Let's hold to those words. Recognise how they may be applied to us. The collect for this Sunday and the week that follows. Almighty God, who alone can bring order to the unruly wills and passions of sinful humanity, give your people grace so to love what you command and to desire what you promise, that among the many changes of the world our hearts may surely there be fixed, where true joys are to be found, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Reading from the first letter of St Paul to the Corinthians. If Christ is proclaimed as raised from the dead, how can some of you say there is no resurrection of the dead? If there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ has not been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, then our proclamation has been in vain and your faith has been in vain. We are even found to be misrepresenting God because we testified of God that he raised Christ, whom he did not raise if it is true that the dead are not raised. For if the dead are not raised, then Christ has not been raised. If Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile and you are still in your sins. Then those also who have died in Christ have perished. If for this life only we have hoped in Christ, we are of all people most to be pitied. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the firstfruits of those who have died. 
for the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Rejoice and be glad. Your reward will be great in heaven. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus came down with them and stood on a level place with a great crowd of his disciples and a great multitude of people from all Judea, Jerusalem and the coast of Tyre and Sidon. They'd come to hear him and to be healed of their diseases. And those who were troubled with unclean spirits were cured. And all in the crowd were trying to touch him, for power came out from him and healed all of them. Then he looked up at his disciples and said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you will be filled. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you, and when they exclude you, revile you, and defame you on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice on that day and leap for joy, for surely your reward is great in heaven. For that is what their ancestors did to the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are full now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who are laughing now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when all speak well of you, for that is what their ancestors did to the false prophets. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Not only a great crowd of his disciples, but also, we're told, a great multitude of people from all Judea, Jerusalem and the coast of Tyre and Sidon come out to hear Jesus. People are coming from all over the place. But when the crowds find Jesus, what do they hear him say? What will we hear? Jesus speaks as the people gather and pronounces four blessings and four causes for lament. Blessed are you who are poor. Blessed are you who are hungry. Blessed are you who weep. Blessed are you when people hate you and when they exclude you. These are not the people you might consider to be blessed. Poverty today threatens to overwhelm millions whose benefits have been cut, whose pay will not rise in line with inflation. Hunger is now a reality, not only for starving millions in Afghanistan and so many countries of Africa, but also for so many families in this country where the choice is now having to be made between heating their homes or eating parents who already miss meals so that their children at least can be fed. Weeping is a reality for people separated from loved ones, especially at the times of most acute need when someone is in hospital or in need of residential care. And whatever we may think of people who find themselves vilified, exclusion from the friendship and care of others needs to be a matter of the greatest concern, not least for the mental health and welfare of young people. How is it that the poor, the hungry, those who weep and those who are pushed out into exclusion can be counted blessed? When we hear Jesus' words, we might think that was all a long time ago. But search our hearts and we probably don't need to look too far to realize just who falls into these categories amongst the people we know. Blessed are the poor. This is how Luke begins the words we call the Beatitudes. St. Matthew's Gospel has Jesus say, Blessed are the poor in spirit. And that makes it tempting to spiritualise the issue, to say that it's really about the way we live and our Christian calling to humility. Well, it is indeed, but not so that you avoid the reality which should confront us. Blessed are the poor. And this means the beggar in the street, the family that can't feed their children or pay for their heating, the desperate people whose benefits have stopped and who themselves have stopped opening the bills which have mounted up and find themselves at their wit's end in debt. When I lived in Jerusalem, 
I would walk past people sitting in the street calling out for money, holding up malnourished children in their arms, exposing untreated sores on their arms and legs. This is what the crowds who went out to Jesus would have seen every day and what they would think of when he said, Blessed are the poor. What do we see and think? Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. This is the first and clearest statement of what we might call Jesus' manifesto. Poverty may be a reality in our world, 2,000 years ago and now, but it should not be so, and it will not be in the kingdom of God, the place where God's reign is established, where Christ is recognised as king and ruler. So we can't walk away from poverty, nor from hunger, nor from the sorrow of others whose plight demands our loving response and friendship. And when people are hated, reviled and excluded, we have to ask ourselves, whose side are we on? Whose side are we taking? It's so easy to think it needn't concern us. It's more worrying when we realise that we are complicit in the fun that is poked at others. It's something that needs to be put right with urgency when it happens in schools or in police stations or in throwaway falsities passed off in Parliament as the cut and thrust of political life. There's lots of attention being given at the moment to behaviour in public life, not least that of the politicians and the police. It's entirely appropriate. But we shouldn't think that the things that are wrong are all happening somewhere else. We need to go back again and again to ourselves. What did the crowds hear Jesus say? What is he saying to us? Jesus' words, Jesus' four words of blessing, go along with four causes for lament. And they're the warnings which should cause us to act. Woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are full now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who are laughing now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when all speak well of you. Woe to you, not to make you miserable, but look at what you've got and why you have it and ask how long you will have it. Our calling as Christians is to share in lasting joy. You can't take the empty riches of wealth with you. You might enjoy your food and notice that Jesus himself eats out a lot and accepts the hospitalities offered. But ask what will truly sustain you. Laughter can be healing, but if it's to lead to joy rather than emptiness, it needs to be more than a cheap laugh, especially if it's at someone else's expense. And there are more important things than popularity when it comes to seeking justice and doing what is right. Four blessings and four woes. What a way for Jesus to speak to those crowds and to speak to us still today. Reading I haven't used in this service, but which is set today, is from the prophet Jeremiah, and he affirms, Blessed are those who trust in the Lord. They shall be like a tree planted by water, sending out its roots by the stream. Its leaves shall stay green, and it does not cease to bear fruit. We can have confidence, because Christ has lived in the midst of all the contradictory tensions which tug at us, because when he is reviled and condemned, even death on the cross cannot defeat him. As St Paul reminds us in that letter to the Corinthians, in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have died. And those fruits are our blessing. Continue now in prayer. Come with thanksgiving for the teaching of Christ. We pray for grace to hear his words and to act upon them. 
the way we act for ourselves, the way we recognize our own human condition, and the way we treat others. It's a prayer of Pope Francis for today, Racial Justice Sunday. Come, Holy Spirit, show us your beauty, reflected in all the peoples of the earth, so that we may discover anew that we are all important and all are necessary, different faces of the one humanity that God so loves. And we pray for all God's people, for all who are human. Pray that we may recognize the human face in others, that we may show it ourselves. We pray for this nation in which we li live, for those who lead us and those who would lead us, for all who enable others in public life. In this time of controversy over the Metropolitan Police, we pray for all who serve in the police force, calling of people with honesty and integrity who seek the safety of others. We pray for those who are poor throughout the world in their need, for efforts at relief, for provision, for continuing development, for people within our own nation who suffer, who now know the reality of hunger, of the cold through lack of heating. We pray for those we know who are in need through ill health. For all who are anxious. For those who have to self-isolate through the coronavirus. For those afflicted by it. Amongst those known to us in our parishes, we pray today for Beryl, Brian, Victoria, Baby Isabel, Keith, Mavis, Brian, Amelia, Avril, Goff, Bill, Marjorie, Andrew, Kate and Valerie. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to your keeping those who have died, those who have been dear to us, of those who've recently died, we pray for Johnson Bell. Of those who've died in past years at this time, for Thomas Brighton Thompson, Jervis Robertson, Mary Coombs, Clive Wilkinson, William Edwin Westgarth, Francis Mary Hogg, Elizabeth Elliot, Scott David Robson, Morris Jameson, and Michael Scott. Rest eternal, grant unto them, O Lord and let light perpetual shine upon them. Jesus in his ministry proclaims the establishment of the kingdom, and so we too pray for it. This litany of intercession after the words, Father, by your spirit, there's a response which you may like to make, which is in the words, bring in your kingdom. And we pray for the coming of God's kingdom, Father, by your Spirit, bring in your kingdom. You sent your Son to bring good news to the poor, sight to the blind, freedom to captives, and salvation to your people. Anoint us with your Spirit, rouse us to work in his name. Father, by your Spirit, bring in your kingdom. Send us to bring help to the poor and freedom to the oppressed. Father, by your Spirit, bring in your kingdom. Send us to tell the world the good news of your healing love. Father, by your Spirit, bring in your kingdom. Send us to those who mourn, to bring joy and gladness instead of grief. Father, by your Spirit, bring in your kingdom. Send us to proclaim that the time is here for you to save your people. Father, by your Spirit, 
bring in your kingdom. Let's keep a short time for silence now as we offer before God our own causes for thanksgiving, our prayer for those whose needs we know. God of mercy, you know us and love us and hear our prayer. Keep us in the eternal fellowship of Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. Some words of peace. Christ came and proclaimed the gospel. Peace to those who are far off and peace to those who are near. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let's join all our prayers together in the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Well, thank you. I've been joined by a number of people during the live stream, and I hope that more people will be joining us as they catch up. Um, this particular video will be uploaded first to St Cuthbert's Facebook page and then shared to St John's and then further afield as well uh, within community groups. So join us in that. Join us, as I say, if you can, in church. It's 10.30 today in St Cuthbert's, 4 o'clock in St John's. Uh, of course, the regular time in St John's is 9 o'clock in the morning. Uh, we also have a baptism in St John's today at three o'clock, so do pray for uh, young Jennifer, who's to be baptised today. Uh, I don't think there's going to be an online service next Sunday, uh, but I'll be back at the end of the month. I'm going to try and take a few days off, though I have no idea at the moment just what I'm going to be doing. Pray for me. I've just got to stop. That's the first thing that I think I need to do wherever you are. I hope that you'll have a good day and a good week ahead. And now we seek God's blessing. God the Father, by whose glory Christ was raised from the dead, strengthen you to walk with him in his risen life. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. <laughs>